Acts chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. Let us stand up, please, as we read the verses. We will study about the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 5. If you're there, say amen. amen. Acts 5, 3 and 4. Ready, read. But Peter said, Ananias, why had Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. The Holy Spirit. There is a great deal of confusion about the Holy Spirit. Many cults deny He is a person and that He is God. One of the known cults today who deny the, the existence of a, of a third person of the Trinity is uh, the Ang, dating the Ang. Okay? Elis Ariano do not believe that the Holy Spirit is a person. He teaches that the Holy Spirit is just a power of God and Jesus Christ, the Father and Jesus Christ. And so as other cults. On the other hand, the Christian movement, which has absolutely swept today's religious world, places extreme emphasis on the Holy Spirit. You know, the problem is there are Pentecostals and charismatic groups that places uh, extreme uh, teachings concerning the Holy Spirit. Na, yun na nga, what you see is the bubbling people and falling people in their worship, they, they, uh, they take it as the power of the Holy Ghost. Are you with me? Hello? I remember being a part of that church. Uh, I, I want to fall, but I do not fall. So I'm trying to fall. So I would look like the Holy Spirit is in me. Okay? And so when I tell somebody catch me, but uh, they do not know na pinipilit ko. And I believe hindi lang ako. Marami sa kanila ang ganun din. Kasi magmumukha kang hindi spiritual. Once you're there in the stage and then you did not fall, that means you have a problem in the spirit. And so for you to for you to look holy, then you have to fall. So, so you know problem. But others, talaga sobra. Talagang uh, yung iba bumubula pa yung bibig. Yung iba nanginginig pa. Yung iba umiikot-ikot pa. There are even, there are even charismatic groups that howls. Yeah. Like that. And they say it's the Holy Spirit. So, is it really the work of the Holy Spirit? That is, uh, and, and some are, yung speaking in tongues na tinatawag natin, yung siyang nalamakas, siyang manakabarakas, siyang marakarama. Ganun po, that's, that's how they worship. During preaching, they do that. The preacher would just preach and then, and then suddenly, bigla na lang, uh, he would speak in tongues. Because he says that it's the power of the Spirit. And so I did that. So, I'm also powerful. Okay. <laughs> As with all these studies, our aim is to look beyond what men say and see what the Bible say. We praise God for our Sunday school. We praise God for our Bible because no matter what religion or any pastor or preacher say, the final authority is what the Bible say. Amen? Amen. So, we will study who is the Holy Spirit. Number two, what has the Holy Spirit done in times past? Number three, what is the work of the Holy Spirit today? Number four. What does the Holy Spirit do when we are saved? What is the relationship between the Holy Spirit and me? And then last, we will just a little bit have a study of what about speaking in tongues and divine healers. Okay, pag-uusapan po natin. So those are six topics. So let's uh, start with number one. Who is the Holy Ghost? Who is the Holy Spirit. Look up Acts chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. Who is the Holy Ghost? Sino ba siya? Tingnan po natin. Acts chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. Go. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? You lied to the Holy Ghost. You cannot lie to a thing. Tama po ba? Pwede ka bang magsinungaling sa pag-ibig? Pwede ka bang magsinungaling sa 
sa init. Pwede ka bang magsinungaling sa bato? You can apply to something that has no life or is not a person. And, and so the Bible tells us, Ananias and Sapphira, they promised a vow to the Lord, but they did not fulfill it. They used the amount for certain uh, personal things and put a part to the apostles' feet. And, and then Peter said, you lied to the Holy Ghost. Verse 4. Verse 4. Let us read just the last uh, sentence. Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. In verse 3, Ananias is said to have lied to the Holy Ghost. But in verse 4, he's said to have lied to God. 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. Let us read. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Okay? So, with those verses, how? So, who is the Holy Ghost for you? Is He God or not? He is God. He is one with the Father and with the Son. Ananias and Sapphira lied to Him, and the Bible tells us they lied to God. Okay? So, Letter, uh, the next is, uh, so this verse tells us that the Holy Ghost is one both with the Father and with the Lord Jesus Christ. There are certain verses even in the book of John when Christ said, When the Holy Spirit will be given to you, and so then I will abide in you. But Jesus Christ literally is not abiding in our hearts. It is really the Holy Ghost. It is really the Holy Spirit of God. Okay? And then next is, uh, let us read Matthew 28, verse 19. Matthew 28, verse 19. Ready, go. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is one with the Father and with the Son. Amen? Next is... Uh, John 14, 16 and 17. John 14, 16 and 17. Read. And I will pray the Father, and He shall give you another comforter, that He may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of Truth. Who is that Spirit of Truth? The Holy Ghost. The Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth Him not. Neither knoweth Him, but ye know Him, for He dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Who is that comforter? Let us read on verse 26. Sino kaya yung comforter na capital C? Verse 26 of chapter 14, he was named. Ready? Read. But the comforter, which is who? The Holy Ghost. Okay? So the Holy Ghost is the great comforter na pinapakita po ng Panginoong Jesus. So, the words that you, even the pronouns in John chapter 14, he would always use the word he, him, and himself that apply to the Holy Ghost. And uh, makikita po natin dito na it can never be, he can never be just a force. The Holy Ghost is one with the Father and with the Son. He is as much important as to our salvation, to creation, to all the things that God has done because God is in three persons. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Okay? So, next, can a lady read uh, John 16, 7 and 8? John 16, 7, 8. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if not go away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Amen. And then another. So don't pa lang. Let's focus there first. In that, ilan ang makikita natin na, na pronoun? And somebody count the pronouns used for the Holy Ghost there. One, two, three.
three, okay? So, sabi niya dito, uh, I will send him unto you, okay? Him, okay? And the next, and when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. So, three pronouns was, was used. And uh, that is a masculine pronoun for a person. Okay po? He, him, makikita po natin, ano ho? Oh, he, he, and him. Tama. And then, ito, verse 13 and 14 pala. Sa so, young people, girls naman. Their faith. John 16, 13 to 14. How be it when he shall come? How be it when he? The Spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truth. Yeah, you see, imagine so many. It's <laughs> better to all three down. Bali pala binasa ko. Okay, so ito pala yo, the 13 and 14, pala yung marami. So, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you in all the truth and he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. So, with those mm, so many pronouns that was used for the Holy Ghost, what can we draw as a conclusion? Is the Holy Ghost a person or a force? He is a person, okay? So, praise the Lord for that. It is all clear in the Bible that He, the Holy Ghost, is a person. And then, uh, let us read the man. This There are three ways the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost may be affected as a person. The first verse that we have read is in Acts. Ano nga yung ginawa ni Ananias at ni Sapphira? They lied to him. And the next is, uh, tignan naman natin dito sa Acts 7.51. Sa young people boys naman. Acts 7.51. Acts 7.51. These things that I can answer always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did so that's good. So, ano mo pwede daw? Para RJ? Uh, we still take the non-circumcised in the Holy Ghost. Hindi. Sama na kayo ulit mo lang eh. Ano yung pwedeng gawin sa Holy Ghost? Ano po? We should always resist the Holy Ghost. Okay. Oh, yun. So, resist. Okay? And then next, yung so, he can be resisted, he can be lied to. Ano pa yung ah... Uh, Ibang verse na makikita natin, Ephesians 4.30. Ephesians 4.30. Ephesians 4.30. Ephesians chapter 4.30. Ready, go. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. So you find there that you can even grieve the Holy Spirit of God. So makikita po natin dito that He is indeed a person. Now, number two, that we will study, what has He done in time past? Before the New Testament ministry of the Holy Ghost, what was he doing in time past? Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. Tatay. And the earth was without form, and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. Okay, so the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. So, he is even active in creation. Tama ba? Di ba, Joel? Okay, ano ho? It is in the creation. And then next is uh, Luke. Uh, 
Second Peter chapter one verse twenty one. Second Peter one. Start that is a verse twenty. Second Peter chapter one verse twenty and twenty one. Sa mga mamis po le, Mister Willie. as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost is active not just in creation but also in active in in inspiration. You know? It is the doctrine of inspiration where the Holy Ghost moved uh, the, 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 these uh, prophets. You know? So even in prophecy, even in inspiration, the Holy Ghost was active doing His part in the work. Amen? And then, of course, we find in uh, uh, Luke one thirty-five. Luke one thirty-five. Luke one thirty-five. Sa young people, girls, Luke one thirty-five. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also the Holy Spirit shall be born of thee, shall be called the Son of God. Yeah, saan nga active ang Holy Ghost? Saan What is that? That the, the verse that has been read. It is what? The conception of Jesus Christ in the womb of Virgin Mary. Okay? The Holy Ghost has put uh, Christ in the womb of the Virgin Mary. After that, of course, Virgin Mary had family, had kids. Ano, hindi na siya. Uh, hindi kaya hindi na siya Virgin Mary after the birth of Christ. Okay? So, makikita po natin dito that the, the, the Holy Ghost is, was even active in the conception of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Hello? So, makikita po natin yung kanyang mga ministry, yung kanyang mga ginawa. Okay? And then, John 16, verse 8 to 14. John 16, 8 to 14. Sino po sa mga binata natin ang pwede magbasa ng John 16, 8 to 14. John 16, verse 8 to 14. And when He is come, He will reprove the, the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they will live not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and He see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is, is judge. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but, what, but whatsoever he shall hear, then shall he speak, and he will shew things on the to come. He shall glorify me. Okay, so makikita po natin dito that even during the conviction for salvation, the Holy Ghost was active. He would reprove the world of sin and righteousness and of judgment. Okay, so when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, it is the Holy Ghost who does the work of regeneration. No tayo rin ay tumanggap. Bago tayo tumanggap, there was a conviction. Okay? When the, when the Word of God has been preached, the Holy Ghost convicted you. And so, you trusted God by faith. Nanampalataya ka, nalitas ka. After you trusted Christ, he was, you were sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. But not just that, what did the Holy Ghost do to you? Titus 3, 5. Titus 3, 5. Five. Titus 3 5. Evangelist. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, so, the washing of regeneration and renewing that gave you the new man. The old man is still there, but the regeneration process of your spirit was made by the Holy Ghost. Nung tayo po ay ginawa ng Panginoon, listen to this, para po sa mga bago din, man who has 
Man was made with three parts. The body, the soul, and spirit. Yan yung bahagi ng tao. Now listen to this. Man has a body, soul, and spirit. But because of sin, the Bible tells us the spirit die. We are spiritually dead. And ye are dead in trespasses and sin. The spirit is there, but it is dead. That means that your spirit cannot connect to God. You cannot understand the things of God. You are separated from God. Because the thing that can connect man to God is the spirit. And so, the Bible tells us, when you receive the Lord Jesus as your Savior, the Holy Ghost has regenerated that dead spirit. Nakakita na kayo ng balat na patay? Tapos nung nilagyan nyo ng maximil na buhay muli, ano mo? It will be dry first and then after that, it will be renewed. That's, that is called regeneration. Even the seed, pag nakakita kayo ng seed, you cannot plant a seed when it is not dead. When it is fresh, it won't grow up. But once the seed is already dead, it is dried up, then you plant it, you water it, then it will grow. That is regeneration. Okay? So, we have a dead spirit because of sin, but when the Holy Ghost came, after we received the Savior, the Bible tells us we have been regenerated. You have been renewed and regenerated by who? By the Holy Ghost. Okay po? So makikita po natin, the regeneration process is of the Holy Ghost. We are born again of the Spirit. The Holy Ghost is the one that regenerated us. Next verse. John 14, 23. John 14, 23. With Romans 8, 9. Sige, sino po ang pwede magbasa? Sa mga mamis ulit. What does the Holy Spirit do when we are saved? John 14, 23. Blessed ladies, John 14, 23. Mr. Chini. So, sabi niya, and make our, the Father and the Son will come to you and make their abode in. Hindi with lang, ano, on the in, ano, and make our abode with Him. And then sabi niya, we will come unto Him. Okay? So, tignan po natin yung uh, uh, Romans 8, 9. So he comes and dwells in us. Tingnan po, po natin yung 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19. Young people boy. Why be boys? Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. Our body becomes the temple of the Holy Ghost. Okay? He dwells in us, and this is His temple. Let His temple be holy. That's why we don't put our altars in our houses, where we put some coins and, 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 and uh, uh, idols. Okay, we don't do that because the temple of God is now our body. Your body should be clean and holy and be separated. Be used for God. Kaya sabi nga eh, uh, that you would offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Why? This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So He dwells in us. Tama po ba? What does the Holy Ghost do today? He dwells in the believer. And the next, uh, Ephesians 1.13. Ephesians 1.13. 1.13. 13. 1, 3. Uh, in whom ye are also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, 
After you believe, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. Ang ibig sabihin po nito, the Spirit of God became the seal of our salvation. Ano ho? Siya ho ang nagsell yun, naging tatak. The, 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 mark of, the mark of a child of God is the Holy Ghost. Okay ho? Kaya nga ho, if the, Holy, the Spirit of God doesn't dwell in you, then you are not a child of God. Kasi yan ang tatak ng isang ligtas. Nandu doon ang banal na spirito ng Diyos. That's why it, a genuine Christian, when you are sinning, there is a conviction within you. Merong nag-grieve. Ano Pero yung kasalanan ng kasalanan, parang wala ka nararamdaman, parang okay lang ang lahat, the Holy Spirit is not in you. And that big He is the seal of our salvation. Okay? Katipayan yan ng ating kaligtasan. Kaya napakahalaga ng uh, banal na spirito ng Diyos. Okay po? Next is uh, John 16, 17. Nabasa na natin ito kanina, but let us read it again. Can somebody read John 16, 17? Sir Janet? Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you. Good. So the Holy Ghost is our comforter. There are times we need comfort that man and words cannot give. The Holy Ghost is our comforter. Amen? Amen. The comforter is the Holy Ghost. Okay? So Romans 8, 26 to 27. Ready? Go. Like all of us, likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. He makes intercession for us. Nananalangin siya para sa atin. He prays for us. He intercedes for us. And now with all those verses, and with some that we will still be reading, we can conclude what is between us and the Holy Ghost. The relationship between the believer and the Holy Ghost. A while ago, we have read the verses that He dwells in us. Another verse is in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 14. Open your Bibles there and we will be reading together. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 14. 2 Timothy 1, 14. Ready, go. That good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. The Holy Ghost dwells in me. If you're a believer, the Holy Ghost dwells in me. The Holy Ghost dwells in you. And then another thing, He will enable you to know the things of God's Word. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12 to 14. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Let us read verse number 14. But the man of the man the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So you find here that as you read your Bible, as the preaching is preached, the Word of God is being preached, the Word of God is being read, the Word of God is being heard, what the, the one that teaches us about the truths concerning that is the Holy Ghost. That's why... Even a very intelligent person, the, the, the believer that is the believer that is uh, 
uh, not uh, uh, sorry, the unbeliever that with even all the education the world can give, without the Holy Ghost, he will never understand the words of God. Kaya na minsan magtataka kayo, bakit ang talitalino naman? Sobrang galing naman, sobrang taas naman ang grade. Yung mga philosophers, yung mga, ano ba nga na nung ano, nung pakalagay sa wheelchair, pangalan yung Stephen, Stephen Hawking, tama ba? Hawking ba? Hawkings? May S? Oo. Sino pa ba yung isa yung nabatay sa cancer na nakikipag-debate? There is a philosopher na magaling sa debate na siya yung atheist. Nabatay yun sa cancer eh. Ano? Ang gagaling naman pero di nila maintindihan na may Diyos. Because there is no Holy Ghost in them. The Holy Ghost is the one that teaches us the things of the Word of God. Kaya I tell you, if only everybody would just take time to read their Bibles personally, you would always take time to study the Word of God, you will learn what God wants you to know. Hindi mo kailangan. Ito ho ang isa sa akin at wala. Gusto kong mabuo na yung lesson ko kasi hindi pa nabubuo. Ang Kristiyano pag may depression, isa ang problema talaga, hindi nagbabasa ng bahay mo. Maniwala ko kayo, hindi ho malalim. Basta ligtas, nadidepress, hindi mo nagbabasa ng Bible yan. Kasi pag nag-aaral ka ng salita ng Diyos, ang banal na spirit, hindi lang kasi Bible reading is not just reading something like a book or whatever, no? Because when you read your Bible, the Holy Ghost works. And when the Holy Ghost works, you will be right with God. And once you're right, you will right with God, the Holy Ghost will teach you all things. Then all the fears will be gone. Lahat ng takot mawawala. Kaya tayo napupuno ng takot, ang lalahanin, ang stress sa buhay, dahil po yan sa ating human nature. Kailangan niyang ma-overcome ng spirit. So pag nagpapasa ka na ng Bible, nilalabanan mo mga kung ano pa mga bagay, eh, habang inaaral mo yan, ang banal na Espiritu ng Diyos ang nagtuturo sa iyo, mawawala ang Kristiyano sa mga pangit na isipin at kalungkutan sa buhay. Opo, hindi nyo na kailangan magbayad ng counselor, ng, uh, na, na mawawala ng trabaho si Sister Esra sa mga Kristiyano. <laughs> hindi kasi na magiging work niya, no? Dahil nagbabasa ng bago. Pero dahil marami pang hindi nagbabasa, kailangan natin ng mga kagaya ni Sister Esra na nag-aaral ng psychology at nag-aaral ng Bible. Amen? Okay. So, tuloy po tayo. Uh, next is, uh, saan na po ba tayo? Uh, so, ano ang ginagawa ng Banal na Espiritu sa atin? Nananahan sa atin? Tinuturuan tayo ng mga bagay ng salita ng Diyos? At ano ang mga magagawa natin sa Kanya? Pwede mo siyang patangisin. You know what? Praise God for this because we know that He loves us. Amen? And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed. Okay? So, pakikita po natin dito, you can grieve the Holy Ghost. Pag nag-grieve siya, that means He loves you. He is hurt when you sin. Every time we fall into sin, every time we commit sin, every time we live in sin, He is hurt. It grieves Him. Do not grieve God. Amen? Nasasaktan na kahit hindi ko kayo nahuhuli, hindi ko man nababasa ang mga text nyo at message nyo at kung sino pa yan. Kahit hindi nakikita ng asawa mo at ng kung sino pa yan ng mga anak mo, may Diyos na nasasaktan at nakakaalam ng ginagawa mo. At kung ikaw ay tunay na ligtas, pinapatangis mo ang banal na Espiritu ng Diyos. Don't live a life grieving the Holy Ghost. Do not grieve the Holy Ghost. And you also can quench Him. You quench the, sometimes, uh, the Bible does us quench not the Spirit. That means, when the Holy Ghost is convicting you to do something, do not stop Him. Do not resist Him. Ang gusto ng pigilan. If the Holy Ghost is convicting you to to uh, do something, if the Holy Ghost is convicting you to share the gospel, 
Are you with me? Have you experienced that? The Holy Ghost is convicting you to give out tracts. The Holy Ghost is convicting you to share the Word of God. The Holy Ghost is convicting you to give your life. Don't quench here. Okay? Do not quench the Holy Spirit. Amen? So, we are being commanded to be filled with the Spirit and not be drunk with wine. The Spirit also produces His fruit in us. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Again, such there is no no. Once you have a good fellowship with God, you are walking in the light as He is in the light. We have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ is unpleasant and from all sins. Once there is a sweet fellowship in the Spirit, He will produce His fruit out of you. And it is fruit, not fruits. That means you can never separate those. Once you are being spirit-filled, that's one time. Hindi pwede na ang ang buong sa akin ng spirit ko ngayon na wala mo na yung joy kasi mainit ang ulo ko. Hindi pwede yun. Karnal ka pag ibig sabihin nun. Hindi pwede na half fruit berry. The fruit of the spirit is love. Ito yung makikita mo. Joy, peace, pepa, nung suffering, handa kang magpagal, um, magdusa for a while, nung suffering, gentleness, hindi ka rude, hindi ka harsh, uh, gentleness, meekness, faith, meekness, naranap pala tayo, nananali ka sa Diyos, meek ka, mapagpapumbaba ka, temperance, kaya mong awatin ang sarili mo, pwede kang magalit, tao ka, pero naakawat mo ang sarili mo, against such there is no, that's the fruit of the Spirit. It's either you have it or you don't have it at all because of carnal state. Nagiging carnal kasi tayo minsan. Na-out of fellowship tayo sa Holy Ghost. Tama po ba? Do you get it, Christians? Hello? Kaya nga, inalintulad ito kayo sabi niya, and do not be drunk with wine. Siguro nalasing na rin kayo. Naranasan ko nalasing to. Ako'y nasa mundo pa. Ang pagiging nila say, meron kang gustong gawin, pero yung, yung lakas ng espiritu ng anak, pag nalasing ka, may mga gusto kong gawin, pero kino kaya may, may mga nakakasakit, may mga naghahamon, may mga nagpapatayan, pero din ang ulit, hindi naman niya gusto yun, parang drugs, parang anak, kinokontrol ka. Nag-gets niyo po? Ganun din. So, sabi niya, be not be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. So, ganun din naman ang banal na Espiritu. Pag puspos ka ng banal na Espiritu ng Diyos, naaawat mo yung sarili mo. Naaawat ka niya. Ang lalabas sa iyo, pagpapatawan, pagmamahal, katinuan, uh, kaayusan. So, anong problema? Ang problema, carnality. Ang problema ng Kristiyano, nasa sa kanyang banal na spirito, pero hindi siya napupuspos. Ano, napupudpud siya. Kailangan ang mana ng palataya, ma-feel. Paano nakikater? Paano na nafe-feed tayo ang ating spiritual things? Siyempre, ng Word of God. Kaya nga ho, maraming mga churches ngayon, kahit ang daming member, wala namang espiritual. Kasi puro ka, puro ka banal. Bakit? Kakantahan ng dalawang oras, magkakantahan na magkakantahan, wala akong naidadagdag yun sa pagiging spiritual ng isang mana ng palataya. At ang Word of God, kapirangot, hindi pa talaga preaching, hindi pa talaga Word of God na preach preaching lang, pero hindi Word of God. Kaya ano ang mangyayari? Isang libong miyembro, paglabas sa mundo, walang bunga ang spirito. Walang kapangyarihan. Bakit? Puro karnal lang. Ganun din ho tayo. Pagpunta ho natin sa church, pagbabasa ho natin ang Bible, aba eh kahit dalawa lang, kung totoo kahit isa lang, kung totoo puspos ng banal na espirito, eh di magbubunga yan. Makapangyarihan yan. Amen po ba? So yun po mga kapatid ng kaibahan. Kaya sana... Alam mo natin ang relasyon natin sa banal na Espiritu ng Diyos. Huwag natin hayaang ma magkigrip siya. Huwag natin hayaang hindi niya tayo magpupuspos. Hindi siya magbubunga sa atin. Yung ating kao, kaya sabi, and be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world. 
Ang pinakakalaban kung bakit ang Holy Spirit hindi nagbubunga sa atin, punong-puno tayo ng worthliness. Yung mga ginagawa natin, yung mga inaawit natin, yung mga pananamit natin, yung ating mga sinasamahan, yung ating mga pinapakinggang advices. Pag puro kumuntuhan yan at hindi ka nakikinig ng salita ng Diyos, hindi ka nagbabasa ng Bible, laging pangit at walang bunga. Okay po? Pero pag ang bunga ng banal na Espiritu ang makikita, magiging makapangyari ang po ating Christian life. Amen? So I hope and I pray that we would continually grow in our relationship with the Holy Spirit or with the Holy Ghost which is the Spirit of God. Amen? So tumayo po tayo lahat at tayo po yung